Hi guys, James at Rampant Live Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one, we are going to head down to Greece once again for the first time in what feels like a good long while. Now we're returning to a brewery that has featured on the channel a good few times before. The beers that I've had from them have been very, very nice. I've seen a good number of beers floating around from them in recent times, but I just haven't got around to actually reviewing anything from them for a little while. But the beer we're going to have a look at today is one that I know is very good. We had this on tap in the Bishop's Arms at Gustavus Toy in Malmö and everyone, pretty much everybody, was agreed that this beer was pretty awesome. And I saw a can of this when I was over in Copenhagen and thought, you know, we have to get one of these and do a sit down review of it. So here we are. So very much looking forward to trying this beer again. Hopefully it's as good as I remember. Hopefully it makes for an interesting review. And as always, I hope that you guys enjoy my take on this one as well. So uh, yeah, for this review then, as I said, we are going to return to Greece. This brewery finds its origins in Corfu, but they are a gypsy brewery these days. So we're going to have a look at another beer from Seven Islands Brewery. This one is called Revenge of the Hopzilla. It comes in at 9.3% ABV. And this one is a New England hazy, imperial, triple, whatever you want to call it, IPA. So uh, yeah, as I say, I know this beer is pretty awesome and it is definitely cool to have one of these to review for you here on the channel properly. So yeah, let's crack on with this one then and see how we go. So as always with my reviews then, I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery before we taste the beer. If you want to get straight to the tasting, just fast forward. All the usual links are in the video description below. That's the brewery website, the link to my other reviews that I've done from Seven Islands Brewery before, and we will no doubt add more to that list in the near future. But there's all the usual social media down there. If you want to see more reviews, do please consider Consider subscribing to the channel. The support you show is hugely, hugely appreciated. And of course, you can go into the home page and search for beer using the geography tagging system. Use your hometown, state, city, country, whatever you like. You can also check out the playlist of different beers from different countries, and you'll find this one in the Greek playlist. I need to see about getting some beers from the other Greek breweries again as well. I brought a good few back with me back in about 2017, 2018, if memory serves me correctly. But yeah, let's crack on with this and see what we have. So on to my brewery notes, and I'll tell you a little bit about Seven Islands then. So Seven Islands Brewery, as I've mentioned to you already, found their roots in Corfu, in the, just, you know, off the west coast of Greece. And the company was founded back in 2013 by Lefteris Mesimeris, Terry, as he's known, and Constantine Pugatis. So Lefteris started home brewing in 2009, and he says he just loves creating his own beers from scratch, and, you know, that he's addicted to craft beer. But apparently his favourite styles are Imperial Stouts and Double IPAs, but he also enjoys a good fruit sour beer as well. But he studied at the Institute of Brewing and Distilling in 2015, and, you know, he's just kind of taken it from there. But the brewery won the award for Best New Brewer in the World and the Best New Brewer from Greece from Rape Beer back in 2017. And one of their kind of debut beers, if we can call it that, the Citra Blast, which has featured on the channel before. Awesome beer, by the way. I do hope we see that again. Uh, it was rated as the best beer from Greece that year as well. So, um, you know, they won a hell of a lot of awards in 2017. And that was what really kind of, you know, propelled them to... Uh, you know, craft brewing stardom, if you like. But since 2017, these guys have been a gypsy brewery. They've brewed in a variety of different places, but from what Terry tells me, they brew most of the beers at Frau Gruber in the south of Germany these days. They've got a barrel aging program as well, so they've been producing a lot of Imperial Stouts. I do have an Imperial Stout from them in the fridge that you'll see feature at some point soon. And uh, they've been doing a number of collaboration beers over the years as well. I do actually have, a, I think, a collaboration sour beer. Uh, that these uh, with a Swedish brewery that these guys were involved with as well that we'll need to look at. Um, but the brewery, the name Seven Islands, of course, comes uh, from the Seven Ionian Islands, which are distinct, <coughs> pardon me, having been under Venetian rule rather than Ottoman rule. And this meant that they developed a distinct culture with a more kind of Italian influence. So, uh, yeah, if you go to Corfu and things, it will be a little bit different from uh, mainland Greece, should we say. But um, yeah, as of October 2022, when I'm filming this review for you, these guys have produced around 80 different kinds of beer and they are mainly known for their kind of, you know, hazy IPAs these days 
and the sort of big imperial stouts. So uh, yeah, just need to see what else we can find from these guys over the next little while. But that is all I can tell you about Seven Islands Brewery for the moment. If you want to learn more about these guys, you can check out the brewery website. You can follow them on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with all the latest goings on. That's probably the best way to do it. You can check out the Untapped page as well to learn more about the different beers that they've done. Or you can check out some of my older reviews. But yeah, like I say, if you get the chance to try the Citra Blast, that beer is an awesome old school west coast ipa and um, they did have another one which was called nocturnus or something like that which was a double ipa and that was also very very good but citra blast was you know bang on the money for me um yeah let's get on and actually have a taste of this beer itself then i think i'm going to be keeping the can from this one as well just because i love the artwork um but yeah there you can see the hopzilla of course obviously it's just based on gojira from Japan. You can see that on the side there, Revenge of the Hopsilla, and you can see with the katakana goji, uh, what's it, yeah, gojira. Yeah, using my Japanese when reviewing a Greek beer, didn't think I'd be doing that. Um, but yeah, this beer, as we said earlier, it's a 9.3% New England triple IPA. It's dry hopped with Citra, uh, Nectaron, Mosaic Spectrum, and Brew One Hops. Um, we know most of these hops quite well, so Citra of course, American, 14% alpha acid. It's going to give you lovely big kind of mango juicy notes and a bit of a lemon limey character in a New England IPA. The Mosaic is going to give you a, a nice kind of juicy tangerine note, about 14% alpha acid, of course, once again. Spectrum is a new type of... Um, uh, like liquid hop product if you like and apparently it's variety specific but you use it for dry hopping I'm not a hundred percent up to date on that brew one we know quite well as well that's a 14% alpha acid hop from the US known mainly for its um, kind of pineapple characteristics but Nectaron is one that I've only come across once or twice before so I got my notes out on Nectaron once again so this one is a New Zealand hop it was previously known as Hort 4337 and the name is taken from the phrase Nectar of the Gods and Ron Beetson who is the principal scientist at the Plant and Food Research of New Zealand and he'd spent his life creating new hops but this one gives you 10 to 12 percent alpha acid and apparently it's a sister of Waimea which we've had many times before and it's supposed to give a big tropical hit of passion fruit peach grapefruit and pineapple so yeah nectar on New Zealand hop supposed to be very good but yeah that's a little rundown of the hops in this one for you you can see there is the seven island brewery symbol which I think is very cool black top on the can here and this beer I should point out was bought at Shiosk over in Copenhagen but um, yeah, let's get this guy out and get on with the tasting then. A 9.3% New England Triple IPA from Seven Island Brewery in Corfu. So let's get this guy out into the glass and see how we go. Oh, this does look very nice. As I say, I remember this beer. This is one of the ones that we've had on tap. We get some really good beers in Bishop's Arms in, uh, in Malmo, but... You know, this is one of the beers that like seriously impressed me, which is why I wanted to get a can and take a proper look at it. But as you can see, this beer, you know, even just looking at it, it looks pretty damn awesome. So you can see this one's poured with about a one third finger of a frothy, I would say perfect white head. That has faded away to be a kind of thin foamy layer quite quickly, but there's a nice thick ring around the edge of the glass. But you can see, I'll just bring that up to you there. You can see the... Uh, bubbles on this one it looks very very nice as I said so um yeah in terms of the appearance this one is pretty much as you would expect from a New England IPA now remember the color of your beer depends on one the type of malts that you use this goes a long way to determining your EBC rating two length of your wort boil is also going to play a role because the longer you boil the wort the more the sugar is caramelized thus you get a darker color of beer um, any barrelation that you do or any adjuncts that you put in will affect the colour too. But when it comes to IPAs of pretty much any uh, substyle, you don't have to care so much about those latter variables. This beer has a hell of a lot of haze to it. If we shine the natural light through it. Yeah, this one, it's not really uh, clear. It's not clear at all. This is haze for days or whatever you want to call it. It's um, opaque as fuck. But yeah, it looks very nice. But remember, the level of haze in these beers depends on the oak content, wheat content, and to a degree, the yeast as well. That can vary from brewery to brewery and even beer to beer. But yeah, from a 9.3% New England triple, you would expect a good bit of haze. And this one certainly delivers on that. 
Um, yeah, one or two big bubbles sticking toward the side of the glass there at the bottom. That's probably just because I've rinsed the glass and washed it before we've done the beer. But um, yeah, you can see it's got a nice little bit of uh, carbonation just going up toward the top there. Uh, other than that, I don't think we need to say anything about the appearance of this one. It's a lovely, yeah, lovely kind of medium kind of pale yellow. It's leaning toward a sort of mango a, a sort of mango pineapple juice type colour this one I always like comparing them to fruit juices of course because that's just what the appearance reminds me of but yeah I think we can take a little look at the aroma of this beer and see what we have nothing untoward about the appearance oh aroma wise that is lovely I'm going to say now I will say this beer is not at its optimum freshness so we will notice some difference there the, the telltale sign of course is that the oats and the aroma and the flavour start to get a little bit drier the older that the New England IPA gets. So bear that in mind when you're trying this style. So <clears throat> this one, you can smell a little bit of dry oatiness to it, but otherwise it still has that big creamy note to it. It's a big, I remember this beer being just really big and really thick and creamy. And this is one of the dangerous things with the New England IPAs these days. When this beer style first appeared, Personally, I used to find it, you know, thick as anything. I used to find them really, really filling. But these days, you have to go to the triples and quadruples to get that same feeling that the singles and the doubles used to give you back in the day. It's just, you know, your palate's always adjusting. It's just how it goes. It's the same with the kind of smoothie sour type uh, beers these days too. But yeah, aroma-wise, this is absolutely lovely. It gives you everything you would want from the style. Good green component, nice juicy fruits. Very tropical leaning, incidentally. Then you've got a good little bit of malt base behind that too. Um, so yeah, let's just break this down and see uh, and see how we go. So aroma wise, backbone of this beer, you absolutely get a little bit of that kind of fresh white bread bread crust that forms the kind of backbone of the beer. Um, but on top of that, there's a lot of you can smell a good little bit of that fluffy white bread, and you can smell that the wheat is thickening the beer out. Um, the wheat in this one. Um, it is very very smooth actually you know sometimes wheat can have a little bit of a bitiness which you would normally get in the back of the nose but with this one not really it's actually a very the malt base in this beer is very very smooth and it leans toward the kind of oaty side of things for me this beer rather than anything but you do smell the wheat in there as i've said there's six different directions i think a new england ipa can go they can be farmhousey and yeasty rye leaning and grainy those are a bit more common in american brewed new england ipas but then they can be wheaty and bitey oaty creamy barley malt bready and also a little bit sweet but quite often they'll show you a number of those characteristics for me this one is really oaty and wheaty but it does have a slight degree of sweetness to it as well. So like I say, bread crusty backbone, good thick dense white bread to it, a slightly thicker um, wheaty character as well. And you've also got a nice big oaty, creamy uh, note to the beer too. Um, yeah, and like I say, the oats, are they are really wet and creamy for me. You can smell a little touch of dryness to them just because the beer is, you know, getting to that stage where it's starting to age a little bit. I think this beer's going to be about uh, six weeks old at the time that I'm drinking it. I'm not 100% sure, but I think about six weeks. Um, but yeah, so you get a little bit of that. You also get a wee touch of the kind of butterscotchy, butter candy note out of this one. I do, I'm on the, the end of a cold, by the way. I will point that out, but I've still got my sense of smell. It is working. But yeah, with this beer... A little bit, you do get a little touch of sweetness in there, you know, some Werther's Original, some butter candy, butter scotch. But yeah, the malt base for me is actually quite straight shooting in this one. So yeah, big OT character, a little bit of sweetness to it. You can't ask for much more than that. There's so many New Englands out there these days that, um, yeah, all you want is a good exam, a, a well-brewed one. So yeah, but this was one of the beers that I thought, damn, that's good. Um... Yeah, let's focus on the green component a little bit then. So for me, the green component is quite interesting in this one because again, it comes across as very smooth and I'm wondering if that's because of the kind of spectrum thing in there. But remember, New England IPAs tend to rely on late addition hopping and dry hopping. Uh, there are three types of hopping. Of course, the other one is early addition. So early addition is within the first hour of your wort boil. That gives you a lot of bitterness. Um, the late addition hopping gives you a little bit of bitterness, mainly flavour and aroma. And that's, yeah, last half hour of the wort boil. Dry hopping after the wort boil is all about flavour and aroma. New England IPAs rely on the latter two. West Coast IPAs use all three. 
So this one for me is definitely, you can tell, because the green component is quite bright rather than being very deep and dank, you can tell that it's late addition hopping and dry hopping in this beer. And of course it smells quite oily, which I suspect is because of the liquid hop product that they're using in here, the Spectrum. But yeah, green component for me, good little bit of floral character in there. There's a tiny little bit of earthiness, which is often a trait of mosaic. And then you've got that nice bright grassy note at the front of the nose as well with this one. Um, yeah, aroma-wise, this is just, it's a lovely beer, this one, absolutely. But yeah, I don't think we need to say anything more about the green component of it, so let's focus on the other things. So for me, it's a very tropical fruit-leaning uh, New England IP. At the front of the nose, you definitely get a little bit of the kind of oily tangerine character that you would expect of, uh, of mosaic, absolutely. That does play a role there, but there's a whole host of tropical fruits to this one. There's a lot of juicy pineapple, I will say that as well. And the pineapple leans a little bit toward the, the oily side of things and it kind of smells as if it builds the bridge with the, the tangerine orange. But absolutely, citrus showing you its big mango-y side. The, the nectar on is giving you like a little, you know, citrus going to do it as well. You're getting a bit of passion fruit. You're getting a lot of juicy mango, a lot of pineapple for me. And of course, brew one is going to contribute to that as well. Probably brew one's giving you the more oily passion fruit I would think um but yeah the the aroma of this one yeah good bit of passion fruit lots of juicy mango very strong pineapple element and then you've got the mosaic sitting in there as well um of course you've got wee hints of like apricot and papayas and stuff in there but yeah for me mainly mango pineapple apricot and uh, pineapple tangerine not apricot um yeah but a beautiful smelling beer this one lovely stuff so as I always say, take a little bit of time to enjoy the aroma of the beer before you get stuck into it. And that's always half the experience when it comes to craft beers and whiskies and sakes and stuff like this. But I think it is about time that we have a taste of this beer and see how we get on. So yeah, this one is the Revenge of the Hop Cilla, a 9.3% New England hazy imperial triple, whatever we're going to call it, IPA from Seven Islands Brewery who are from Corfu in Greece. Let's get stuck in. Slanja, Ska, cheers. Or as they say in Greece, Yamas. Oh yeah. That's still bloody good. Yeah. <laughs> um, first impression of it is, it's actually, it's kind of interesting this one. Um, because when we had it on draft, it had a little bit more sweetness to it. Um, but this one, in, on, in the can, it comes across as really creamy. And like I said, this one's a very oaty, creamy-leaning uh, New England triple. But it's beautifully done. It gets a big thumbs up from me. But it just kind of goes to show you how if you condition the beer slightly differently, it really can uh, make a difference to the flavour. But yeah, this one's not quite as sweet as I remember, like I said. But otherwise, you know, a big, thick, creamy and juicy New England triple then um, yeah, absolutely. So big thumbs up to, to Terry from me for this one. I think this is awesome. And I will also say, this beer is dangerously drinkable. It really is. Very, very soft, very juicy, very drinkable beer. It's dangerous that this one is 9.3%. It did actually feel heavier and boozier on the, the tap because you had that you had this, a slightly stronger kind of brown sugary sweetness to it. Yeah, a little bit more of that Werther's original type quality. And it does have that, but just not not as much, I don't think. Um, but again, yeah, beautiful beer. And the other interesting thing is I'm getting a wee bit more bitterness out of this too. Which is uh, which is kind of interesting. Um, but yeah, let's break this beer down and describe it for you in depth as we usually do. But like I say, very oaty, creamy New England IPA, this one, a little bit more bitterness to it, lovely juicy fruity notes, um, but yeah, lovely beer list. I need to get a few more from Seven Islands, absolutely. I want to have a look at their original Imperial Stout that they did, I forget the name of it now, but the original Imperial Stout that they did was supposed to be awesome. So, yeah, middle of the palate with this beer. For me, yeah, you get a little touch of that kind of 
bread crusty, bready backbone there, but it's really quite minimal, that to be honest with you. You just feel a little bit of it, particularly the further into the aftertaste you go. It's got a little bit of a kind of flour. Um, you know, it's like fresh white bread, bread crust, but it's almost got that little bit of dried flour um, coming out of it. So yeah, you certainly do get that as well. Um, and that just forms, and it just gives the beer a little bit of dryness the further into the aftertaste you go. But on top of that, you can certainly feel a little bit of the kind of white bread, and it's quite a dense white bread actually, but still a little bit fluffy from uh, the barley malt. You can feel the wheat on top of that just thickening the beer out. And I will say as well, in the actual flavour, the wheat does have a wee bit of bite in this, but we'll come on to that later. So yeah, a little bit of fresh white bread, bread crust, some dense but fluffy um, white bread from the barley malt. Above that, there's a little bit of a thicker, wheaty character as well. But then on top of that, you're getting the nice kind of creamy, oaty notes from the beer. Um, So yeah, the way that that goes together, I think, is is absolutely lovely. Um, the oaty notes in this beer, as I said, they're very creamy and almost very slightly porridgey in a way. It's kind of like that. So yeah, um, this beer has held up very, very well. I will say that too, because it is... I can't remember how many weeks ago we had this now. Maybe about three or four, but we got it when it was extremely fresh. We put it on when it was very, very fresh. Um, but yeah, it's... The oaty layer just sits on top of that wheaty side to the beer. And if you go down the middle line of your tongue, as I say, you can feel it's the, the oats are very kind of wet and very sort of porridgey. As you move out toward the sides of your palate, they get thicker and almost give you a little bit of sweetness. And then as you reach the extremities of the sides of that middle third of your palate, it's a little bit more kind of dry. You are starting to get a little bit of the oaty dryness out of it. And like I say, that's the sign that the beer is getting a little bit older. Like I said though, this beer does have a good little bit of sweet component to it. And you know, to be honest, when it's 9.3% as a triple, I would want a little bit of that in there. So that's good that it has this. If you go to the dead centre of your palate, you get a nice, there is a nice little almost straight up caramelly note there. And that of course is your alcohol that's giving you that. As you move further out from it though, it starts to develop a more, it does start to develop a little bit more um, kind of Werther's Original, butter candy, butterscotchy sort of thing. And as you go out toward the edge of the uh, the palette, you'll get a little bit of a, um, you do get a little tiny touch of a, a McVitie's Digestive Biscuity note to it. So I wonder if there's maybe a little bit of Golden Promise in this. Um, just giving you the, the biscuity notes that you get out of this beer um, just remind me a little bit of Golden Promise. Um, so yeah, I think we've said everything. We need to about the middle third of the palate in this one. Like I said, this is one of these beers where it's actually very straight shooting, but it's just really nicely done. And the way the flavours blend together is, is, is just awesome. So yeah, this one is pretty good. I'm curious as to whether this beer has a little touch of lactose in it. Um, no, it doesn't. Well, I have to say then, this is one of the first, because this beer in some ways, the kind of level of smoothness that you get out of this is almost akin to like a, a milkshake IPA in some ways. So that's quite impressive. I don't know what he's doing with this to get it so smooth actually, but I like it. Let's look at the back third of the palate then. The border region between middle third and back third of your palate, you get a little bit of bready build up in there again. And then the back third of the palate is kind of similar. So you can feel the fluffy, bread crusty, uh, sort of base to it. The white bready layer that we talked about before is still there, but it's a bit taller and a little bit more airy. On top of that, you start to get more of the wheat. This beer, as I say, the more that you drink of it, it really does give you a bit more of a wheaty, bitey character the further into the aftertaste. And the wheaty bitiness just sits uh, a little bit higher up on the back third of the palate. Above all of that, of course, though, you've got the more yeasty aspects to the beer. So yeah, some really nice yeasty aspects to the beer um, sitting on top of that. And uh, yeah, the way that that goes together, I think, is um, is very, very nice. Um, the, the, the yeasty aspects in this beer, it's kind of like a sweet, it's like a more airy, almost slightly farmhousey bread, but there's a little element of like an almost honeycomb type flavour uh, on top of the back third of the palate there. But yeah, the yeasty notes come out 
further back on the tongue for me. But like I say, the malt base in this one, it gets sweeter, I think, the further you go into the aftertaste with it too, and you do get more of that wheaty bitiness. But, you know, straight shooting malt base, we've talked about it quite a wee bit in fairness though, um, but I like it. Let's, you know, I would say back third of the palate, the flavour is definitely taller than as you come further forward, it just condenses down a little bit. But like I say, beautiful malt base in this one. Let's focus on the hoppy side of the beer then. At back corners of the palate, there's a little bit of earthiness, absolutely. Then as you come further forward from that, you get a big oily character. The green component in this beer is very, very oily. And like I say, I wonder if that's because of Spectrum or, you know, exactly what, you know, maybe they're using cryo oils and stuff like this. I don't know, but I'm sure they would say, um, they've said that it's Mosaic Spectrum specifically, so the other ones maybe are just pellets. But yeah, the green component, as I said, for me, there is a bit more depth to the green component in this beer then um, the aroma would have you believe like as i say you know when you use late addition and dry hopping usually the green component is brighter if you use early addition hopping as well you get a bit more depth to it it just feels a bit more dank and things this beer does have a little bit of that like as you come further forward along the sides of your palate there's absolutely that kind of there is a little bit of depth to the floral aromaticity but it becomes a little tiny touch spicy as you reach the front corners of the palate and as you go round the front curve of the palate it's a little bit more light and grassy, but still it's quite oily in that sense. And you get a wee bit of zestiness out of it too. So, um, yeah, I think it's it's quite interesting that way. So, yeah, green component wise, this one is... Um, is really nice actually it just complements the, the sort of bit of floral character it has complements the wheaty aspects of the beer too but let's focus on that fruity part of your palate and the, the front third of the tongue so the border region between front third and uh, middle third of your palate a little bit of um yeah a little bit of a kind of white bready sort of thing then the base of the front third of your palate is uh, more it's more oaty and it's actually a more kind of smooth and slightly creamier oaty character there but yeah the fruits come out in that nice oily bubble uh, on your palate just on top of that back of the front third of the palate then you get a little bit of that more um you do get a bit of a stronger grapefruity passion fruity sort of thing i'm guessing that's going to be the citra in this case but yeah as you and i guess nectaron might um uh, the nectaron probably naming that wrong the nectaron is going to give you a little bit of that too but yeah so a little bit stronger grapefruit as you move further forward it mellows out to be a passion fruit but then yeah you get a lot of uh juicy mango in there of course um in front of that as you reach the kind of middle point on that front third of your palate it's a lot of oily uh pineapple for sure a lot of nice yeah a lot of nice kind of oily uh yeah a lot of nice kind of oily pa uh, pineapple in this one and then yeah as you reach the kind of front tip of the um uh, as you reach the kind of front back part of the tongue you've got a more oily kind of tangerine character coming out of it so uh yeah i do like how that how all that goes together the fruity notes in this are very it's quite interesting because it's quite oily in a sense the pineapple notes and the tangerine notes from the mosaic are very oily and i think that's probably the brew one that's giving you that more oily pineapple character but yeah the the citra and the the, the, yeah, the citra and the, the nectar are kind of backing everything up, actually. So, yeah, um, this is all this, it really is very nice. This one, it's got a good balance of fruit, but yeah, stronger grapefruit, a lot of mango in there for me, big pineapple presence, which I do enjoy, and then the juicy tangerine orangey qualities. Beautiful beer, this one. I'm really very, very impressed with this. It's one of my favorite um ipas that i've had in quite a wee while actually there's so many of these beers out there these days that it, you know in honesty it can get a little bit boring with this style Um, i wish i wish we had more west coasts and black ipas out there to complement the new england's but it's still we're still in the kind of haze craze unfortunately um but yeah this is a beautiful example of the style i have to say and as i said the reason i wanted to do a review of this one was because i enjoyed it so much um but yeah I think we've said everything we need to about the flavour of this beer. Let's just round off with the mouthfeel. So, um, for me, this beer, as I said, this one, it's, 
it's hard. It, it's a mix of like it's creamy on one hand, but it's very oily on top of that. It's almost kind of silky in a way. I think that's a good way to describe the mouth feel. Um, bottom end of full bodied for me, but definitely one of the kind of thicker New Englands that I've come across. Absolutely, very very thick for a New England. Um, but as I say, it's quite silky. Carbonation is very very smooth. The IBU count in this beer is, uh, I would say, yeah, the IBU count in this beer is, what would we say, I think this has got to be about maybe 40-ish IBUs, it does feel a little bit more bitter and you get more bitterness out of it in the aftertaste, so it could be 40, maybe 50 at an absolute max, uh, the malt base, as we said, lovely and smooth, a little bit of wheaty bitiness there, smooth creamy oats and a bit of sweetness, and you've also got that big juicy oily fruity character to it as i say just a beautiful beautiful beer this one and uh, one of my favorite ipas that i've had for a wee while so i'll be keeping this can and you'll probably see it behind me when i get my own apartment and uh, have a nice kind of beer shelf and things so this is a can i definitely want to keep but yeah i think we can uh, leave it at that for this one this was the revenge of the hopzilla a 9.3 percent new england triple ipa from seven island brewery uh, a gypsy brewery who find the roots in corfu in greece uh, yeah, if you get the chance to try this one, I would highly recommend it. And to Terry brewing the beer, I would say make sure you do this one again because this was pretty damn good, I have to say. Um, yeah, let's leave it there. Once again, thank you for watching my beer reviews. Until the next time, please like, subscribe, share, all the usual YouTube stuff. Let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comment section below. Let me know what your favourite beers are from Seven Island Brewery as well. And we will be returning to these guys to have a look at something a bit darker fairly soon. Till the next time, slange it, Scott. Cheers. See you guys on the next review.